All right, everybody. Well, hey, we are back uh, with a badass, true badass podcaster who's doing some really cool stuff. Jenny Bellinger is known, is better known as the direct sales dom. Uh, she's the host of the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast and helps rock star direct sales moms whip their business into shape. Jenny is a certified professional coach, so her methods aren't painful, but are very effective. And so we're excited to have a very effective podcaster on here on Petcha Pod Pitch today. How's it going, Jenny? It's going great. How are you doing today, Scott? I am doing wonderful. Tell us about BDSM. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a loaded question if I ever heard one. Oh my goodness. Uh, Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast uh, is a way for me to help more people be more successful in direct sales. That was really, really my, my intent on doing that because I know not everybody uh, starts their direct sales business um, thinking, boy, now that I started a business, I'm going to hire me a coach. Right. <laughs> so I knew that if I, if I could put this out there, then there would be people who would, who would hear this and be able to get the information, start applying it to their business and be more successful right away. Mm -hmm. What's well, been the, the biggest surprise that's kind of shocked you from having the podcast? Ooh, the biggest surprise from having the podcast, I'd have to say, um, you know what? It's open doors for me that I didn't know were available to me. So um, best example I can give right now is a friend of mine who's another podcast host interviewed the CEO of a direct sales company and then created an introduction. And I'm interviewing that CEO on my podcast next week. Woo -woo. There you go. Woo -woo. So excited. So yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be something big because I, I don't know that I ever would have maybe approached him um, without having the podcast mm -hmm. um, to say, you know, hey, let's, let's talk to your peeps through the podcast medium. So it's, it's been awesome. Hmm. Where do you, uh, what are some of the, the best tools that you've loved using with your podcast that makes your job a lot easier? Because are you doing all the production yourself? Are you outsourcing some of it, doing it all or outsourcing all of it? Oh, no, not outsourcing yet. I'm working on making that a possibility. Um, but right now, my two biggest tools to help with making podcasting easier, number one, Calendly. I saw Jess uh, just brought that up. Amen, sister. I'm right there with you. Um, I use that. Uh, Calendly is my way to schedule. It gets me all their information that I need in order to create a great introduction. So that's good. It also sends out the reminder with the Zoom link so that we can record. So that's helpful. Um, and then the second thing that has been really helpful, I, I do all my um, audio editing right now through Hinden Hindenburg. Mm -hmm. Love Hindenburg. Um, it, it makes more sense to me than some of the others that I tried to play around with at first. So it, it's good. Good stuff. What are some of the, the biggest surprises you've had from a guest on your show? Is there anything that really kind of shocked you or like, oh, wow, that, that kind of makes me think differently? about a su subject or anything? Not really, because most of the people that I interview have never been on an interview before. And so they are terrified. <laughs> um, you know, so it's it, there. I think many of them are really worried about coming, coming across. Right. And that's really my job is, is the host is to make sure that they look amazing, that they sound amazing. Um, so that that way they can utilize the podcast as their own marketing material. Um, so I haven't really had anything shocking because they mostly kind of hang back. Although I do have to say after, after I announced my podcast, a friend of mine reached out to me and he did send me, um, he said, if you're going to be doing a podcast that includes BDSM, you have to have a great safe word. And so here's a, here's a suggestion for a safe word. And so the safe word is meatloaf on my podcast. So if I ever ask a question that somebody doesn't want to answer, all they have to do is say meatloaf. And I will back off and then edit that out. So that way, you know, it, if it's too pushed too far, nobody's ever safe worded out. But anyway, the, the thing behind safe, uh, that, blah, 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 the story behind the safe word is with meatloaf, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. <laughs> so it's, it's a great icebreaker to have that conversation with the guests before we get started, just to remind them, hey, don't forget about the meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So that, that, that brings on a question when, when people are, are, are terrified, I mean, you give them a safe word, but how are you, how are you preparing for that a little bit more so, so that so, you're not, you know, I know you're editing obviously some, but what are some things to help you overcome some of that? 
so what I've been doing is, of course, I always, um, I try to do a pre-interview with as many of them as possible. Um, now, of course, some of them are super busy, like the CEO of a, you know, major direct sales company. Um, but the rest of them are leaders and consultants in direct sales. So they've got time to do a pre, a pre call just to get comfortable. I make sure they're comfortable with zoom. They've, that they sound good, that they look good. The lighting's good. So that way, you know, they're going to feel very comfortable. And then of course, once we get onto the zoom for the day of the actual recording, I don't start the record until they're ready to go. So good Don takes care of their subs. So <laughs> <laughs> Now, has that affected you? Have you gotten any negative feedback because it's kind of with, with, with utilizing that kind of marketing or not? Um, I wouldn't say negative per se. There's been a couple of people that I've reached out to to you know say, hey, I'd love to have you on as a guest. And they've declined because they were like, I, I can't market that I was ever on this. <laughs> like, because they're, they're, they're just like, I live in the middle of Bible Belt, USA, mm. and I just, I, I just can't. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I knew going into this that having badass direct sales mastery with my podcast art that has BDSM across the top uh, and with a picture of me holding a riding crop, wearing a corset, that that was probably going to turn some people off. And I'm okay with that because they're not my tribe. Right. That is such a good point there is not everybody is uh, in, in our tribes. Everybody's not an ideal person for our shows, right? Exactly. I don't, I, if there's going to be someone who is going to be sitting there like, I can't, I can't talk to you. I can't do any of this. And of course, normally when I'm, you know, doing my podcast interviews, I'm not all corseted it up. I did this just for you, Scott. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, but I, I, I do, you know, normally it's pretty chill. It's a, you know, I let them know this really should feel like somebody is sitting at a table next to us at Starbucks um, and they just get to overhear a conversation. That's really what it is. It's this, the point of this isn't to make anybody cry. It's not to make anybody feel uncomfortable or feel badly about their business. It's really uh, supposed to be a way to celebrate what they're doing and just saying, you know, hey, what's your biggest obstacle? Because we've all had them. So, you know, let's talk about that. And how did you overcome it? And let's share that story, that journey. And, it, you know, what the feedback I'm getting from my guests is that it's been a really eye-opening experience for them to be able to share that interview. So mm -hmm. that's been cool. That's cool. Any been, any been secrets given away that you were surprised about from your guests on, on direct sales and what they deal with or no? Hmm. Not yet, but I'm sure when I interview the CEO of Pure Romance, some fun stuff ought to come up. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, Just he's saying. probably got some stories, you know, he's, he's been in the business for, for 20 years, um, almost 20 years, but his mom is the one who started the company. So I'm sure he has got some really fun stuff. So I am super excited for that interview. Yeah, I, I would say so. Th that one and, and anybody else that you've had in the past that you were really excited about that really kind of uh, a guest that really exceeded your expectations well i well i have two um mm, yeah two i have to say the one that i thought was super cool um was my very first international um interview so i interviewed someone in australia um so that was really fun because it was monday my time tuesday her time so if there's any other podcasters out there who have ever tried to set up an international interview it's kind of a headache, but so worth it. Cause now, now my uh, Australia numbers have just gone through the roof, which is super cool. Um, and then one of the other people who exceeded my expectations was somebody who I interviewed and then she ended up hiring me and she has been just the most amazing client. Um, she, she teaches me and keeps me on my toes all the time, which I absolutely love. I, you know, if I have a client that I'm bored with, I'm going to have to fire them. So <laughs> luckily my clients all pretty much uh, work pretty well with me, but she's been a lot of fun to work with. Cause again, this wasn't necessarily my intent for her to come on as a, a client. Yay. Benefit for both of us. It's a win win. Right. But um, just, how awesome she's been as a client because she came in ready to be coachable and mm -hmm. i loved that that was great it, it's always easier when people are coachable no matter what <sighs> you're doing versus why am i doing that no i didn't i do it this way yeah. bother, well right? that's why you pay me the big butt big bucks right 
So why hire me if you're not going to do it? I mean, you pay me no matter what. That's the agreement, but mm -hmm. that's okay. That's right. Well, that makes it a good question because I know we had people on before. We'll have people on throughout the weekend who mm -hmm. are are using their uh, podcast with you to help with coaching clients. We just talked with Melanie Benson as well. Um, what's you know, what are you hearing? What What's the biggest aha from your clients that have heard the podcast? What's the thing that surprised you the most about that? Their biggest aha during a podcast interview? No, what's what's the, when they, when you sat down and coached them? Because I, I get this from some of our coaching students that there was a nugget or something shared that really helped them connect or it was something. I think the biggest one, the most common conversation that I have with my clients, and this happens on the podcast, it happens you know, obviously in my coaching sessions yep. is the balance question. You know, how do I achieve work-life balance? Because a lot of my clients, obviously they're in direct sales. Many yep. of them, you know, their moms, their wives, they, they're working a full-time job and they're trying to get this business and get it so that it's replacing their full-time job income. So how do I get balance? How do I get balance? And I'm like, mm, balance is bullshit. Yep. It doesn't exist. It's, you know, it, it's a magical being it, like a unicorn. It's just, no, it's not for real. So it's, it's really about taking a look at what your priorities are. Are you focused on your top priority right now? And are you okay with it? Mm -hmm. And if any of any of those answers is no, then change your priority, change your focus, change what you're doing and get okay with it. Right? So it, it's really about those things because balance in and of itself is it's, it's a myth. It just yeah. isn't possible. So it's just saying, okay, my focus right now is my health or my relationship or my business or my kids and be okay with it, but then be there a hundred percent and be present. And those are the moments where, when I think a lot of people get permission to be okay with just going and locking themselves in their office for an hour to work on their business, because mm -hmm. they know the next hour they're going to go play with their kids or they're mm -hmm. going to go you know, do whatever they need to with their, you know, husband or, you know, friends or whatever else is a priority for them. Yeah, that's true. I've always heard the uh, analogy that life is a deflated tire, that it's never going to be perfect tens all around the board. You're going to always have some area of that tire that's flat. It's a two or three versus a 10 in other areas in our business, our health, our finances, and our family. The five. Oh, yeah. And, but I, I, the analogy that I uh, have heard, and I don't even remember where it came from, is that all these different things that you're juggling are, are balls, right? But each of them is made of something different, right? Your business is a rubber ball. It will bounce back. Your health, your relationships, maybe, maybe not. Your friendships, maybe, maybe not. But do you really want to screw with those things? So those balls are typically made of glass. Mm -hmm. Don't drop the ball on your health, on your friendship, on your relationship, on your kids, right? Your business will bounce back. Love it. What's the best way for people to reach out to you, Jenny, uh, to learn more about you and connect with you? Well, I'd have to say probably Facebook. Um, if people are in network marketing, Facebook, that's where they all are. That's where I am. Uh, Badass Direct Sales Mastery. Uh, you can find the podcast there and you can also find me there. Good stuff there. Well, hey, thanks so much for being on Pet Your Pod, Pitch and Sharing your, your podcast and some great nuggets for everybody out there. Uh, oh, thank you. Thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, anytime, anytime. We'll see you again. All right. Sounds great. We'll talk again soon. Thanks. Bye. All right. That was great.